Welcome to this continuation of our series on the A to Z of human factors design science. When a UX engineer works to optimize a design, that engineer is not going to do it based on just common sense and good intentions. The engineer is going to apply billions of dollars worth of research-based insights and models and methods. And we love to apply those to all kinds of complicated systems and complicated ecosystems and wicked problems. And we'd like to share just a couple more examples of the principles that we apply to design. H for Hickheimen Law. Imagine how long you would take to order food at a restaurant if you had to choose from a menu of a hundred items. The Hickheimen Law examines the relationship between the number of options present and a user's reaction time to any given option. As you would expect, the more option to choose from, the longer it takes for the user to decide which option to pick. You can find applications of this law everywhere. It determines the number of controls on your microwave or your washing machine. Generally, the application of hick hyman law is simple. Reduce the number of stimuli for a quicker decision-making process. You can see this in action in the navigation of any website. If home pages or menus offer direct access to every link within a site, you could quickly overwhelm the visitor. It could take several hours to scroll through, while Amazon's shop by department option is clearly visible. It places the focus on the search box. Just one option to choose from makes the users find what they're looking for. Otherwise, searching for a last minute birthday present could be a nightmare. D for divestiture aversion. The moment we choose something and associate it with ourselves, it undergoes a transformation. Its value for us is at once increased. This emotional bias is referred to as divestiture aversion. It is the reason that some people have lofts, storage spaces, garages, filled with junk that they cannot bear to throw away. Investors tend to hold on to certain stocks purely for comfort and familiarity, even though they may have become unprofitable. Divestiture aversion makes us want to retain the things we now consider ours. We are more willing to purchase items after trying them out. This is why free trials and sampling often result in successful sales. Research suggests that customers are more likely to buy items of clothing after they use trial rooms. You can see why car salespeople are keen for you to take a test drive before you make a purchase. Or why shops are happy to offer a money back with no questions asked option. Once you've got something home, that item is now yours. So you are far less likely to take it back to the shop. A for approach avoidance. An approach avoidance conflict occurs when someone is faced with a decision to pursue or avoid something. Something that has both great advantages and disadvantages. For example, let's take the case of marriage. The prospect of love, companionship, caring and comfort that comes from marriage can make someone want to propose marriage to their partner. That is, they're approaching the concept of marriage. But as they become more aware of the negative aspects of marriage, such as responsibilities, arguments with their partner, or just problems with in-laws, then they might also want to avoid marriage. Take another example. Let's say you're offered a job promotion and it pays a lot more than what you're currently making. However, if you are to accept this offer, you will have to move to a city far away from your loved ones and the weather there is much too cold for your liking. That sounds like a difficult decision to make. 
This influence of the positive and negative aspects of the decision creates a conflict for the decision maker to either proceed towards a goal or avoid it altogether. This also gives rise to a significant amount of indecision and stress.